right, friends at home, welcome back. You are now in the second video for today's math lesson. We left off looking at problem number five. It says nine take away zero. So I wrote it this way, but I'm going to write it the way they have it in the book so that it makes sense to your minds. So we have nine. We're taking zero away from that. Whenever I'm dealing with subtraction, I like to think about cookies or candy. If I have nine cookies and I don't eat any of them, how many cookies do I have? Everyone? Nine. nine. Now, another way that I could write this subtraction problem, I have to keep my whole or my total the same. I can't change that because the big number always has to come first in subtraction. But I can flip around these two. I can switch their places. So instead of saying 9 take away 0 equals 9, I could say 9 take away 9 equals 0. Do you see how we're just flip-flopping the parts? Just like we did in addition, we would have part, part, whole like this. And let's say we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3. All together, that gave us 8. It didn't matter if we said 5 and 3 or 3 and 5, both parts still made the whole. In subtraction, it doesn't matter which part you take away, you'll still have the remainder be the other part, okay? So now let's take a look at number, nine, um, number 6 right here. It says 9 take away 7. So what you're going to do is figure out whatever way is easiest for you to subtract. Uh, some of us like to use cubes, some of us like to use 10 frames, some of us like to draw. Noah, you're going to put those away right now because you need to be paying attention to the board. So if I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and everyone count with me, we're going to take away 7. Are you ready? I want to hear everybody counting. Here we go. How many does that leave me with, Mateo? So if I have nine and I take away seven, I've got two left over. Now, they want us to write the related subtraction. So now, I have to start with nine. That number cannot change because my big number comes first. But this time, instead of taking away the ones I crossed off, I'm going to take away this other part. So I'm going to flip-flop, Johnny. So instead of nine take away seven equals two, I'm going to say 9 take away 2 equals 9 take away 2 equals 7. All we did was crisscross our parts. You see it? Awesome. Let's take a look now at the word problem here. I'll move it to the top of the page so you can all see it. Um, it says Jake has 10 crayons. Okay, so count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful. He has ten crayons. It says he gives three crayons to Sam. Okay? So here we go. One crayon to Sam. Two crayons to Sam. Three crayons to Sam. And it says, how many crayons can Jake give to Tony? Okay, well, he had 10, and he already gave three away. So how many does he have left to give to Tony? Well, let's count the numbers we have left. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 10 crayons take away three crayons leaves him with seven crayons. Is there a reason why you're talking, Blake? Because this is important stuff. You need to know this, okay? Can anybody tell me what the related subtraction fact would be for this problem? Remembering that my 10, which is my whole, has to be my first number. Beckett? 10 minus 3 equals 7 is what I have here. What would the related fact be? 10 minus 7 equals 3. I flip-flop my parts. I can't move 
my whole, okay? In subtraction, the big number always comes first. In subtraction, the big number always comes first. Say that. In subtraction, the big number always comes first. You got it. All right, we're going to skip over the right about it, and I'm going to move on now to the top of the next page. We'll do a few more together, and then I'll have you do some on your own. And then we'll be all set with math today. So, Lillian, the first one here says 8 take away 2. So I'm going to use whatever method works best for me. I'm going to draw. You can use counters. You can use cubes. You can use your 10 frames. Whatever you like to do best. I'm going to draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And how many am I going to cross off, Lily? Two. two. So goodbye, goodbye. There's my two. How many are left over? Six. Six. So, Lily, my parts now, as you can see here, I have two separate parts. My parts are two and six, right? So now my other subtraction problem, I still have 8 to begin with. I can't change that. What would the flip-flop be? 8 take away 6 equals 2. Beautiful. Thumbs up if that's what you had in your brain. Awesome. Connor, you're going to do the next one for us, okay? So Connor number 2 says 9 take away 8. So let's imagine, Connor, that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we're going to take away 8. Count with me. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So how many did we take away 8? How many does that leave us with? 1. So our parts are 8 and 1. So what would the flip-flop or the other related fact be? Not plus, take away. Beautiful. Nine take away one equals eight. All right, let's do five minus zero, Emma. We'll have you do this one. So we have five take away zero. All right, and that's one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to take away zero, which is none. So how many, whoops, how many do I have, Emma? I have five. Now, Emma, if my two parts, think about the part, part, whole, okay? My two parts are 0 and 5, and all together that gives me 5. Then my other subtraction sentence, instead of 5 take away 0 is 5, I would say 5 take away 5 equals 0. Good job. All right, we have two more, and then I'm going to have you do some on your own. Let's do 10 take away 8, and I would like for Blake to do this one for us because he's back there talking to Dominic. I don't know how much he's learning, so we're going to have him do one. All right, 10 take away 8, Blake. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to take away 8. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight. So how many do I have left? Two. So eight, ten take away eight is two. So my parts here, I have eight is one part and two is the other part. So now what would my other subtraction sentence be? Ten take away two equals eight. Muy, muy bien. Good job. All right, last one is going to go to Victoria. Number five says nine minus nine, Victoria. If I have nine cookies and I eat nine cookies, how many cookies do I have left? None. And what's the number for none? Zero. Now, I need to figure out the flip-flop. So if I think about this in part, part, whole, I know that one of my parts is nine. The other part is zero. My total, or my whole, is 9. So my two subtraction sentences would be 9 minus 9 equals 0. And 9 minus what, Victoria? I already have 9 minus 9. Now I need the flip-flop. So 9 minus 
zero equals. Okay, Isaac, you are like saying answers into her ears and they're wrong answers and I can tell by her face that she's getting confused. Don't shout out wrong answers because that confuses people. Victoria, we have two parts here. We have a nine and a zero. We've already said nine minus nine equals zero. Now we need to flip those. So now we have nine minus zero equals nine. There you go. I knew it was in that brain of yours. All right. So hopefully this is starting to make a little bit of sense. It's honestly easier than we're even making it if you just think about the fact that all you do is flip-flop your numbers. So friends at home, what I'd like you to do, if you um, turn to the top of the next page, there are um, one, two, three, and four problems here. What I want you to do is solve for these problems and then draw lines to connect the problems that are related, okay? When you're finished doing that, down on number five, it says Amy has nine books and reads four, so how many does she have left to read? I want you to write the two related facts for that as well. You do not have to do the right about it. And we will continue to work on this over the next few days, and it will start to feel easier and easier as we continue working with fact families. All right, friends at home, we'll see you later.